Hey there you guys, welcome back. Today we are going to transplant this, uh, or uh, divide, this uh, Pinguicula morinensis, the butterwort, Mexican butterwort. This has been sitting in this pot for quite some time. Uh, as you can see, it's very, very full. <laughs> You've got some beautiful blooms on here. The blooms remind me of a violet, uh, or a viola, and uh, absolutely beautiful, uh, but uh, it's been neglected. It actually looks this way, well, probably because it's it's really, really uh, crunched into its pot. It's hanging over the edge, but also because recently I've let it dry out a few times, so it's into its dormant phase, um, where the leaves aren't uh, as big, and they also are not producing as much uh, sticky sap uh, to catch the bugs. There are bugs on there, though, some fungus gnats, but uh, it'll really appreciate a transplant and a division. So anyway, I'll bring you a little bit closer and uh, actually, I will show you what we're going to use for, uh, for media. I've got in here, <laughs> uh, in here I've got lots of perlite, and I've also got peat moss. You don't want to use a all-purpose potting soil for this because you don't want anything that has any fertilizer content. Any fertilizer content will potentially kill this plant. Um, Pinguicula morinensis seems to be one of the more forgiving of the carnivorous plants. Uh, a lot of people are able to grow them with other house plants, but uh, we want to be on the safe side and use something that doesn't uh, doesn't have any any added uh, chemical fertilizers or anything like that. I have a feeling that a natural fertilizer would not be so bad um, because in nature things decompose and, and naturally produce uh, nutrients that go into the soil, um, but these guys are used to having not uh, good conditions that really really inert soil so anyway I'm going to mix this uh, this uh, peat moss and and uh, perlite up and we'll get back to it I'll bring you down closer and we'll uh, we'll divide this plant up should be fun <laughs> okay so we got a few pots here I'm gonna split it into three uh, divisions I could easily put it into I don't know eight or ten different divisions because I've got so many different rosettes. I could I could technically take each rosette and pot it up individually. I don't want to do that though. Uh, so I'm just going to carefully lift it out of its pot. Don't be afraid of uh, of this guy. This uh, pinguicula tends to have really shallow root system, and uh, they might not even uh, come out with any soil. They might just pull straight off the top. Don't worry, you didn't kill it. Uh, so yeah, anyway, I'm just pulling out a lot of the dead leaves over time. These naturally happen <clears throat> Just do the cleanup And here naturally see they're they're coming apart So I'll just set that aside This here was in uh, is is in uh, sphagnum moss, so it'll be harder to break apart just because it's in sphagnum moss. But uh, there we go. Easier than I thought. Look at this. There's another rosette. <laughs> this was so much easier than I thought it was going to be. There's another rosette. Looks like I'm going to have a lot of baby plants here. <laughs> oh man. I want to split this one into two. I'm not even prying, I'm just letting it divide where it needs to divide. I'm just going to break off this flower spike because it's already broken. And uh, as you can see, there's really no roots under here. The roots are actually right up, right up close to the plant. I don't know if it's going to come into focus, but there's little, little teeny roots. Just going to remove these dead leaves. These are also really easy to propagate by leaf cuttings or leaf pullings. I recommend it if you have one of these plants, take a few leaves off and, uh, and pop them in a little bit of soil. Actually, they're kind of like an African violet. You can kind of just lay them close to the surface and, uh, and they'll just root from their stem or from the, the end of the leaf. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this soil mixture with the perlite. I'm just going to fill the pot up 
almost full. Break up any clumps that are in there. We're basically just going to rest, rest this on top. I'm going to add a little bit of soil around. Let me use this pot as a extra helper. If you bury a couple of leaves, don't worry about it. You want to make sure that there's contact with the earth though. That's the most important thing. If you cover some of the leaves, they might rot, but that's okay. What might also happen is they might produce more offsets, and that's that's a bonus. So I'm going to also reuse this old pot. In a perfect world, we would tr we would sterilize this first. You can use a bleach solution and water, uh, and then let it sit for a while. Uh, or just uh, soapy water and clean it all up but I'm in the midst of of this process <laughs> and I don't want to do that so just gonna fill it up like we did I'm gonna take one of these single rosettes we'll take off all of the uh, the extra leaves here just clean it up There we go. This one here, you can see there's a little bit of root development here. I don't know if you can see that. They look like little hairs, little white hairs. I'm going to fill this pot up almost to the top. This one I'm just going to poke my finger down because we want the rosette to fit in there. And we're going to poke it back in. We'll water these in when we're done. And the last one that I'm going to do, I don't have enough pots here. We'll pot up this nice rosette. Again, we'll take out all the, the dead leaves. Everybody needs uh, a pinguicula for their, uh, for their plant room because these guys really eat up the, uh, the fungus gnats, which is invaluable for, uh, for all you plant nuts out there. I didn't realize how much of a good job they did until I, I got some. And uh, the population of fungus gnats naturally went down significantly. You still have some, sure, but at least you don't have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. And then you look at the, the, the leaves on this guy, and they're almost black for fungus gnats. It's pretty amazing. All right, so. These are all potted up. I'll have to go and find some more pots for these because I wasn't expecting this. Move these out of the way. And I've got some uh, some filtered water here. Actually, I'm going to remove all of these flower spikes because you don't want the plant to focus on flowering when it's trying to uh, re-acclimatize itself. We're going to take some of this uh, filtered water. This is from the Zero Filter. Uh, you don't really want to use tap water, however, pinguicula seem to be a little bit more forgiving, like I said. Um, but uh, you don't generally want to use tap water because uh, it's got a lot of dissolved um, minerals and stuff in there, chlorine and whatnot. The zero filter filters everything out, so it's zero parts per million. And uh, that's kind of what you want. Rainwater as well, unless you live in a really polluted area. And these guys would like to stay constantly moist. Usually I will have them with a little tray with just a little bit of water at all times. Except in the winter time, you want to let that tray dry out slightly. And then um, after maybe a, a week of being uh, having a dry tray, uh, water it again. But uh, anyway, this was transplanting and dividing uh, uh, Pinguicula morenensis, super easy to do, fantastic plant to grow. Everybody that has a plant space should have one of these because they are fungus gnat warriors. And uh, yeah, anyway, happy growing. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. And uh, also join the Plants and Things What's Growing page uh, where a lot of fun people are and uh, very knowledgeable people, friendly people, and we have a good time. Enjoy some photos, enjoy some conversation. Just enjoy a good time. Just very relaxed. Anyway, happy growing, everyone.
Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to trim off just a little bit of the Silver Falls. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want it to bush out a little bit so it's just not so thin. I want them to be a little bit more bushy. So 